Mocks have to be up there as one of the most controversial parts of a GCC student's journey. The question of do mocks really matter is always asked from year 10 all the way up to year 13. I've personally talked about why I believe mocks matter in this video right here. But to keep it short, even if mocks don't really contribute to your final grade like they did during lockdown, they're still an extremely important tool. I took them seriously because they gave me a rough indication of how I'm actually going to perform on the proper exam. I mean, think about it. The exams you're going to sit at the end of year 11 will probably be the first ever external exams you've sat. You've probably never sat in a room under time constraints doing questions out of a paper you've never seen before that will probably determine your full grade. That being said, here's exactly how I revise for my mocks. Firstly, I start as soon as possible. For me, the mocks were the first time where I was really being assessed on all of my subjects in a really short period of time, three weeks for example. This meant that there was going to be a lot of congestion in my schedule. I didn't want to make my life even worse by procrastinating so much that I only start revising like a week before the mocks. Because that would mean that I would be extremely busy. And I'd have to sacrifice some of the stuff that keeps me sane, like going to the gym, going out with my friends, going on walks, that sort of stuff. That is why I always give myself a lot of time to revise. I would honestly recommend starting revising around a month before the mock season starts. You might think that that's overkill, but I'm not saying study 8 hours a day for a month straight. When I start early, I only do an hour or 2 hours a day. Stretching my revision out over a month means that I could get a lot of effective revision in, while at the same time not sacrificing some of the stuff I want to do like my hobbies. My lifestyle when I don't have an exam season coming up, and when I do, is pretty much the same. I don't sacrifice any hobbies. After that, I had to understand that every subject is different, so I needed to revise for them in different ways. I've talked about this before in my video about the biggest mistake I made during my GCSEs. And that mistake is learning one technique and then applying it to all of the subjects, even though the subjects are different. Before starting any proper revision, I sat down and grouped all of the subjects I did into different categories. I had three groups. The sciences, so computer science and the triple science, and then I had essay-based subjects, so for me that was English and business, and then I had math on one side. Making these groups gave me a rough idea on how I should approach every single subject. Now of course, the subjects in these groups are also slightly different to each other, so you're going to have to approach them in a slightly different way, but that is up to your judgement. If you want a more detailed explanation on how I revise for each subject, I've made videos explaining exactly how I revise for each subject that I got a 9 in. You can check those videos out in my GCSE advice playlist. Now after grouping the subjects, I look at my weakest link, which for me was English. I knew that the majority of my studying had to be focused towards English because I knew that it won't really take a lot of effort and time for me to get high grades in the other subjects, but I knew that English was a challenge. Like I said before, I usually start just doing one hour a day and then increase as the month goes on. However, sometimes this could actually decrease. Sometimes I know that I have a good understanding of a topic, so I don't have to waste that much time going through it when I could just use that time on something else. And so sometimes I can have days where I don't study at all, or maybe I only study 30 minutes a day just to go through some flashcards or do some practice questions. That's because I always try to use spaced repetition. So in that two week period leading up to the exam, I'll be just going through the flashcards, maybe every couple of days and then doing practice questions to really solidify that information in my brain. I also always try to do questions as soon as I learn information. This honestly is one of the most underrated things you could do, which is as soon as you learn some information, just do some practice questions for it. Doing practice questions as soon as you learn information will create a practical link in your mind. That link makes it easier for you to memorize that information because you've proved to your brain that you need that information. Pareto's principle states that 80% of the results will come from 20% of the action. Now I know I overuse the 80-20 rule, but I 100% stand by it. I always look at my studying technique and then ask myself, what action is giving me the most bang for my time and effort? You're gonna notice that it's not highlighting or reading or making your notes look all pretty that gives you the best results. It's flashcards and practice questions. That's why I don't spend that much effort on my notes. I just make them as soon as possible and then make flashcards and then just go straight to practice questions. That is exactly what I do to ace my mocks. And if you wanna know the biggest mistake I made at GCSE, then watch this video right here. In uh, GT. There's three things you have to do, okay? Number one, make a good product.